So welcome uh, today this morning. It's another soaking hot uh, day in Shanghai. Most of you, most of us we know. Most of the people here I've, I've met during the Founders Breakfast and we actually on our journey, uh, our vital by journey through China. A lot of you have helped me and I appreciate it a lot. So I'm very happy to share our story today and to share a little bit what, what has happened to us during the last year in Shanghai. Uh, how do we look at this business in China and how, you know, how we're going to move on. I think a lot of you have seen this, uh, this box or received this box on your, on your doorstep. Um, this shows our story in short. We tried to summarize our story on, on our packaging, uh, which is a Dutch farm on Chungming Island. Uh, Uncle D is our founder, bringing it on the bike uh, to the big city, energizing people um, in, in the big cities in the world. During lockdown, um, a lot of you have got to know us better because we were uh, the only ones who could supply you with good food. I'm happy we could and um, I would like to show you first a video to give you a little bit of a uh, more visual picture of how this looks like in reality. Saving water. That's it in short. Um, doing more with less. Farming in the most uh, advanced facilities to, uh, with minimum amount of resources, grow the best tomatoes in the world. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, our founder, Dirk, we call him Uncle D in China because everyone here is called Uncle, Auntie, uh, Uncle D. Um, he opened our farm in March last year together with the Dutch consular and our operational, uh, our grower. Um, after which we started the trial season. We are Dutch, we are not so keen on food, we just, uh, we eat everything basically, we grow everything, we eat everything. But in China we, we knew people here care a lot about taste. So we did a, a big trial, we invested a lot to have a very short season to test the Shanghai market, to see what do people like. We tested 15 different varieties, and in the end we picked three, uh, the, yeah, the ones you, you all know by now. This one was one of our favorite varieties, really because of its, its outstanding taste. Um, then in December, January, uh, it started to take off. This December last year, January this year, we had 10 uh, yeah, near to five tons of tomatoes per day out of from zero to five thousand kilo per day So we had to move move very fast. So the first where uh, Step one is go to the wholesale market. Just make sure everything moves. So this is uh, in December January We put a lot of effort on developing a retail brand because in the end we want to um, that it doesn't uh, just compete with all the tomatoes in China, but we want to be uh, at the right market. We want um, this premium product to touch the right consumer that really cares about uh, good quality, safe, healthy food. So we developed with several people in this room today as well. We developed uh, packaging, we developed uh, a story, and in the end, we managed to get into uh, several big retailers in Shanghai, like Aldi, uh, City Super, and uh, also Costco. 
you see a picture of how we how that looked like and that's yeah that's actually was our big goal um everything started to to calm down things became easier we're looking at okay where it's going to be our next project but then in early april things uh drastically changed within within one week we lost 100 percent of our customers so we still our farm doesn't stop so we're still having 5,000 kilo of tomato per day, but there's no more customer. So it keeps stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. And we're, what to do? Is it going to be four days or 40 days or maybe even 60 days? We, we didn't know back then. So we were forced um, to run our farm in the, the first week with only three people, where we have normally about 40 people. Uh, it was only our grower, our local grower, uh, another local grower and our Dutch grower. So as you can see, they were loading, they were doing basically everything by themselves in the, in the first few days. We managed to get more people to, uh, to the farm bit by bit, uh, but it was really, really survival mode, really like a war zone. Um, yeah, we made it to the newspaper, to the news in Germany, etc., uh, feeding a city in lockdown, which of course is, is a great thing to do. Uh, here you see a picture of our team. Once we got freed again, everyone happy. But uh, it, it has been really 60 days camping in a in a farm, sleeping in yeah not so very nice conditions. But we made it. The farm survived, and uh, in the end, a lot of people got to know us, and we managed to to bring good quality product to the market every day. So. Uh, we, we always had the idea in Shanghai, you want to touch the market directly, right? From farm to fridge is the best, uh, the best model. We harvest today, tomorrow it's in your, in your fridge and you can, uh, the shelf life is, is in your fridge, basically. Um, be, because of the lockdown, we were forced to accelerate this model. This was the only way, the only way we could move our tomatoes. So happily being in China, we have WeChat, we had a small community. Uh, we had some partners like Rainbow of Hope, which accelerated the whole thing. And within, within one week, we went from about 100 kilo per week to more than 1,000 kilo per day directly from farm uh, to consumer. In the end, that, that went up to 100% of our production. So like three, three to 5,000 kg per day from Chongming by truck directly to the houses of the people. Uh, that, was, that was amazing to see. I think. The only one, my lovely girlfriend who had to take care of me was, was maybe less happy because we were on the WeChat all day, all day, all day, all day, all night. But uh, in the end, everyone happy. It was, uh, it was a great experience. A lot of people got to know us. And uh, yeah, so this, this approach from farm to table, from farm to fridge is, is in, in my opinion, the best way. Like you don't have any, any middleman, you don't have any waste. Uh, you can plan your, your, your harvest much better, especially if you work on a subscription model, which you're developing right now. So we want to keep on doing this. And um, yeah, it's, it's for the farmer is the best, for the people is the best. It's, and it's only in China. In Netherlands, we could never dream of, of such a system. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really amazing to be here and to have experienced this, even though it's, uh, yeah, it hasn't been the best time of the world. So there's some pictures um, that relate to the lockdown, the joy we sparked during lockdown. It was really amazing to see how people are so happy with the tomatoes. I was really out of my mind, like how people can be so excited about tomatoes to come and sharing pictures, sharing uh, freshness, sharing joy. Really within communities, people stood up as leaders, distributing tomato to the communities. Yeah, outstanding, really, really amazing. Um, then what? After the lockdown, we, we started up again. Things were going smoother and smoother and smoother. But then uh, something much bigger happened than we could control. Uh, the partnership with our, with our investor, with our asset owner, uh, collapsed 20 years earlier than we expected. We were actually planning to farm, run this farm for the next 20 years. But um, yeah, they had some problems which are bigger than we can control. So we couldn't uh, continue on this farm. So yeah, then what? We, we had to pivot again. Luckily, we are getting pretty good in this, uh, moving from business to business to business and staying, staying agile. So 
what we're doing right now. That's why I got home a bit late yesterday. Came from four or five thousand kilometers uh, westwards. We're helping some other farms, uh, high-tech farms in China, to do better, to do the startup, uh, which is our specialty, to start up new farms, train the people, um, set up all the systems, making sure that actually it's not just a high-tech farm, but it's a high-tech uh, profitable business. So we support them on growing data and also sales. Uh, I'll go a little bit deeper into what, what do we do as a, as a company after sharing our Shanghai story. Um, our purpose is to sustainably feed global cities, and we do this by running high-tech greenhouses. Um, where better to start in China than Shanghai, right? The biggest, one of the biggest cities in the world. Um, we think our fresh, tasty, and uh, food-safe tomatoes are energizing the city citizens' lives. And we grow this by using proven technology from the Netherlands and use our Dutch management to make it work. <coughs> so we believe, uh, this is Michael, by the way, our uh, head of uh, production. He's born in a tomato greenhouse. So his dad had, uh, had a big farm back in the Netherlands. And as a young kid, he was running around there already. Since the past 10 years, he's been doing this for us all around the world, from Ukraine to, to Georgia to Kazakhstan and now in China. But we believe it's, it's nice to have a great facility like we had in Shanghai, but without generations of experience, it's, it's very hard to manage. It's, it's extremely difficult. So we combine those two. We train the, the locals, and we try to uh, make a farm independent ASAP. So these two things combined, uh, experience and production facility, gives you the best uh, product quality, which you all have seen in Shanghai. So it's our aim, um, we start in Shanghai, but it's not our aim to stay only in Shanghai. Uh, this is a great place to build a brand, great place to start, but we want to scale up all around China and we want to build large scale facilities uh, in strategic locations. So in the end, we will be able to um, supply 1 million households with fresh uh, fruits and vegetables every day. Um, this is the Shanghai project. Um, in, like I mentioned, Ukraine, Kazakh, Georgia, we have very, very capital intensive business. We build our own greenhouses, we work with the banks, etc. We develop our own projects. It costs extreme amounts of money and therefore you cannot scale up as, as quickly. Right? In China we try a little bit more uh, light, light model in which we rent greenhouses from asset owners. The government is heavily supporting this industry. A lot of investors, they want to solve this fruit problem, but they don't know how. We are here to, tell, to help them on the how to run their farm and give them a stable return on investment. So in Shanghai, we, we arrived in 2020 and we were there as supervisor to make sure uh, everything is uh, built properly. Even though it's not ours, we still want it to work flawless. It should still be a great, great working project. Um, so we set up the sourcing, we set up the, basically everything needed, and we started the trial. Then uh, after the trial, like I just explained, we, did a, uh, we started our first season, which I just uh, explained a little bit into more, into more detail. Together with Brent Entre, a Shanghai co uh, local company, we developed this brand Vitabyte. Um, which we managed to build out to, to what it is today, and which we plan to scale uh, in China, but also in our other production locations around the world. So we position it as an as a eco-friendly brand, uh, try to really touch the, the top of the market with the very, very best uh, quality. We try to make it fun uh, and really promote a healthy lifestyle. It's not just a tomato, we try to yeah, really add something um, to this society. So some challenges. Uh, apart from what I explained, we already had a very challenging time, but we have learned a lot. Uh, some general challenges in this in this market. The the market is is super young. Like where in the Netherlands it took us 100 years to be where we are today. In China they did this in 10 years. It's extremely impressive. Uh, Chinese learn super fast, but the market. Is, is not there yet, it's not as developed. So it's mainly huge projects, 
uh, but without a very strong supply chain in between. So you, as, a, as a project owner, as a grower, you need to develop everything yourself. You need to find your logistics yourself. You need to find, uh, you need to make your own brand and things like that. It's, it's actually very complicated. So I explained this, this market is, is relatively young. It's, it's not comparable to the Netherlands, but that's why we're here and not in the Netherlands. This is a market with big potential and we are here to develop the, the market together with the local companies. Another challenge is a lot of this, um, this system, a lot of the growing is still knowledge and experience based. Um, the Dutch growers are the best in the world because of their experience and because of their history. Um, but there are not enough of them. The biggest limiting factor in this industry is, is the growers. So what we're trying to do is in all our global locations is to roll out this data different approach as much as possible, collect all the data and be able to set up farms faster and faster. Um, like I mentioned, the building a brand is not really a natural thing for a farmer to do, uh, but it's since the market is not as developed yet, um, you see a lot of farmers uh, trying to do this. Um, 30 years ago in the Netherlands was the same, but in the end, uh, some really big brands um, yeah, won over the market and people supplying now to them. But in China, um, actually, it's a very interesting model from farm directly to the, to the people, as I explained. I'm very curious to see how this will uh, play out in the future, in the long run. Um, High-tech greenhouses is extremely capital intensive. It's not um, everyone can just start a small high-tech greenhouse. If you want to make it feasible, if you want to make it profitable, it needs to have a certain scale. You need an enormous amount of capital, um, which, is, which is not easy for, for anyone. So therefore, we we running this hotel model, basically the Marriott model. We uh, rent from asset owners or we run it for them to be able to scale up faster, to be able to solve this problem faster and to be able to make a bigger impact. So yeah, with challenges, also a lot of oppor uh, opportunities come, of, obviously. Um, the middle class in China is, is rising very fast. Urbanization is, is extremely, uh, is moving extremely fast. So what we do is with the minimum amount of resources growing uh, the maximum amount of, of high quality product is, is a perfect match to, to play in on this, on this trend. Um, large ag agricultural projects are under development all around China. So from here to the west, to the north, to the south. And the government is totally dedicated to fuel uh, this development. And they really want to transition from low tech farms, from uh, low to mediocre uh, product quality to high quality, uh, fresh, safe food every day. Uh, of course, the health and well-being trend is, is, is huge. And that's what, um, yeah, what's a nice, nice way to play with here in cities like, like Shanghai. Everyone wants clean, green, safe products. And the online retail, online and offline retail which in, in China overall is, is booming. Costco, all these big retailers are scaling up very, very fast. Gemma X, new models, but also uh, platforms like Ding Dong, etc. So it's very, e it's getting easier and easier to find to find the market. Although you need you need skill. So some key takeaways. Um, we've had a, in one year. I think we learned really a lot. Uh, we went through a big roller coaster, but it was very, very, uh, yeah, very meaningful. I would say. So I think one big thing, always try to stay positive, even when times get tougher and tough. So during a lockdown, the first week we were desperate, but after that it actually accelerated us in the direction we wanted to go, and it helped us uh, as a company. Uh, if you de decide to go into a very long term, for example, 20 year cooperation, make sure you have tested your partner, you have some uh, proper experience of, of collaborating and you know what you're stepping into. Um, try to focus on the most important thing first. If you run a farm, uh, you can indeed not do everything at the same time, like building a brand, doing this, doing that, doing that, is, is uh, a lot. If you want to start up your farm, make sure your farm runs well, and then step by step develop. Uh, not everything has to happen today, let's say. Even though your plan might change, um, you doesn't go as planned, Make sure you start. You keep adding value, like uh, like we're doing right now. We we are not in the position we wanted to be actually, 
but we keep on adding value and we see uh, all around China there are huge opportunities and we already found like very interesting new uh, potential partners. Yeah, and uh, stay agile, be ready to pivot your business anytime because you never know what happens. Make your plan, of course, without a plan you're going nowhere, but uh, stay flexible and be ready to, uh, to change your business whenever that's needed. Short summary, like this is the people we do it for, the fans um, we, we have in Shanghai and around China. This is our team, the team we love. The magic we create together, uh, a lot of cool pictures we received during the lockdown. A lot of amazing uh, people started cooking at home and started making really beautiful, uh, beautiful things. So yeah, what's, what's next? Um, we're building, we keep on building and we're always looking for partners and investors to make an impact together. People that have the money, that don't know how to uh, solve this, um, yeah, how to solve this food problem. We are here to help. We are here to do this together and build a sustainable business together with a stable ROI for asset owners. We're always looking for growers, experienced or less experienced, that want to learn, that want to uh, join this, this ride with us to grow the best tomatoes in China and beyond. Looking for uh, people to manage our community. We think community is very important uh, in Shanghai, but also in other uh, large metropole, metropole cities in China. So we uh, need people to help us on this. And we're looking for a digital marketer to actually bring the product from our farms all around China to the people by a smooth running ecosystem. Thank you very much, Yash. This is uh, my story. Excited to share this with you. It's been an uh, yeah, amazing year. Happy to have met all of you, that everyone has been part of this journey. And I'm, I, thank you, Marian, for uh, making it possible to share this story.